You're listening to The Dental Guys, a special update on COVID-19. On Monday, the American Dental Association recommended that dental offices shut down for three weeks, except for emergency procedures only. John and I discuss the initial impact that this had on our office. We also bring in guest Justin Goodbread to discuss some financial implications that this might have. We discuss this and much more. Looking for a lab that understands the bridge between art and science? Check out the Dental Crafters Network. Dental Crafters, one relationship, infinite possibilities. Contact them at 1-800-472-8302 or at dentalcrafters.com. Do you want to learn to predictably place and restore dental implants using the most modern science and technology? We are talking 60 hours of CE in a comprehensive curriculum and live surgical implant placement on pre-selected patients. Head over to RestorativeDrivenImplants.com to learn more today. Well, and welcome to this week's unprecedented episode of The Dental Guys. I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And I'm John, the dental guy. John. And man, what a, I don't even know what to say. What a week, what a day, what a moment in uh, our profession, in our lives. Ugh. I mean, where do you even start? I, <laughs> I mean, it's I mean, been to- a crazy time, man. I mean, I'm, we're, we're, we're just kind of like trying to put this together today, you know, talking about, I mean, talk about, you know, there's that whole, there's the, the classic internet phrase, you know, that escalated quickly, uh, could describe the last, uh, you know, week, maybe two weeks going from, well, this is no big deal. It's even kind of, maybe it's like kind of going to be funny when it all blows over to, well, this is getting a little bit more serious and, you know, we're seeing some scary things over here and, uh, but that's all still over in another country now, you know, to where, what are we going to do? And to now where we are today, which is, which we're going to get into in the next few minutes. I mean, Wes, like, how are you feeling right now? Well, I'm thankful. Um, I'm thankful for what happened today as far as my team and how they really pulled together and took the news uh, yeah, I mean, a couple of days ago, we started seeing uh, dental associations, right? Different states uh, started making announcements that they were either suggesting or in some cases requiring dentists to stop practicing. Um, some cases, again, it was recommendations. Other cases, it was mandates. And sometimes it was dental associations and sometimes it was dental boards. Um, and, you know, I, I came back to work on Monday, uh, yesterday, you know, and just didn't really feel good about it. I mean, you start to understand we did all the precautions, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're having people gargle with 1% peroxide before we work on them. We're talking about their history. We're having them hand sanitized. We're trying to keep people separated and distance. But when you really look at the protection we have in our offices, I mean, everybody knows, unless you're wearing an N95 respirator and you've got HEPA filtration in every room and, uh, you know, you can really keep your patients, maybe you see one patient <laughs> in your office at a time. I mean, we're really having a risk here of spreading this not only to our patients, but to our team. And then when we start to see things like, you know, it's staying airborne uh, potentially for three hours once you aerosolize this virus. So, you know, I'm not feeling great about this, even though there's not been any official recommendation or mandate at that point. And then you know, we start seeing more states making more recommendations, more dental boards. And then, you know, yesterday evening, the ADA makes a recommendation on if through email. And uh, I think both of us, you know, had the same re- realization at the same time, you know, this is, this makes sense. You know, we, we have to do something. Um, and, you know, so I immediately, well, not immediately, but after going home and trying to figure out what the heck we're going to do, uh, just became the realization it's, it's time, it's time to follow this recommendation and and shut things down uh, for everything except for emergency care. And and I called Wes, you know, cause we're kind of thinking the same thing. Um, and, you know, of course then it's like, well, what, what do you do next? You know, how, what is this going to look like? How's this going to work? It's super scary. And 
how did you, did you, you contact your team through text messaging too last night, right, Russ? And you told them, like, you told them that evening, hey, we're going to shut down and did, you're going to meet with them, right? It was something like that. Yeah. So you and I were, you know, we were getting ready to get on the phone with um, some advisors here. And as we're discussing that, we think, you know, throughout the day, you and I were texting, you know, we were texting, yeah. like, did you see it? You know, Ohio. I mean, it's interesting right. because people were calling me, uh, Jason uh, uh, Kaiser, a Kettenbach rep, called me about a meeting that we're covering at the end of September. And he was like, hey, I just want to let you know that the state of Ohio has decided to close dental offices. And he was like, they also, the Ohio State University shut down that meeting um, at the end of April. And, and I said, well, it looks like we're going to probably be shut down tomorrow. It's like because Virginia at that time and Ohio State. Um, and then Kentucky, and then we were on the phone with our advisor, John, and um, yeah, North, North Carolina. Carolina, right? And then um, at about the time, we were just trying to say, okay, how many weeks and all that time, the American Dental Association sends over a recommendation that uh, dental offices close, um, and it was recommended that we only see emergency patients. I think it was interesting last night, John, because our state, the state of Tennessee, was saying they were meeting to discuss what was going down. Right, the dental board. The dental yeah. board, right. And so our state dental board was meeting last night and didn't come out with um, an official stance until uh, this afternoon. I got an email around well, 2 And that wasn't the board. That was the Tennessee Dental Association. Our board mm. still has done nothing. Yeah, which is and kind of embarrassing. I'm pretty, I'm pretty fired up about this actually, and I, I think a lot of people, well, as we're get, kind of seeing what's going on in the social world, <laughs> are pretty fired up about this because, you know, I, I, I applaud. I'll just come right out and say it. I applaud the ADA for make, taking a stand on this. I know it's not. I know that was hard. That right. takes some, took some real guts, some real resolve and courage to come out and make that statement. I know it's not a mandate. Everybody knows they're just, they're not a government burning body. It's not a legal mandate, but um, it's a rec strong rec recommendation. And then our state dental association today came out and backed that up and said, hey, we know this is a hard thing to say, but we, we you know, recommend that you follow that. And yet, where's our state dental board? You know, what's going on? And I think it's not just our state. I mean, it may, maybe they're still, maybe they have a meeting plan for tonight. I don't know. Maybe it just was they were trying to, but I think a lot of state dental boards are waiting for someone else to do what they should be doing, which is making a call, whatever that call is. Because as dentists, I mean, that's who governs us. That's who makes the decisions about what's legal and what's not. Um, when we leave it up to the American Dental Association, that's great that they're stepping up, but our dental boards need to do more. But be Well, here's what it created, John, is it created confusion. Because last night God. you saw it across the Facebook forums. It was crazy. People were trying to decide what was elective and non, right. um, what what's was an emergency, emergency what's a non-emergency yeah. case. And, 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 you know, immediately I'm just thinking, why does it even matter? Because we're dealing with something we don't understand really well. Right. And how There's it spreads. There's a bigger thing going on There's here. There's a bigger thing going on here. And, you know, you know, I will say this, is that there was some clarification for us, you know, uh, today, whenever they defined in the state of Tennessee what for a dentist an actual emergency that you should be concerned about was. And they they, right. they made that clear. And John, uh, you know, it was clear that it was dental trauma. Like my mm -hmm. tooth got broken off at the gum line or my face got hit or something like that, right? Or right. an abscess. Right. Or some pain. Right. Right. And I'm sorry, but, you know, this is unprecedented. So, John, we made some plans, right, this morning. Actually, last night, right. last, you and I. Last night. You last and I night, did, we like kind of got together and we talked about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we said, all right, what what's going to be the best way to go? You know, the American Dental Association is recommending three weeks. Um, and for various reasons, I think it's wise to follow that recommendation. Now, you might say you can come at this from several different angles. You could say, number one, uh, liability, right? If, if you don't follow that recommendation and someone on your team gets sick, maybe dies, which is, I know, extreme, or what if a patient gets sick or dies? I know that's extreme, but, you know, is that going to come back up that you didn't follow the recommendation of your association? Is that 
I mean, if, if there was a civil lawsuit against you, I mean, that's one thing. Well, let me just but say I this, John. Much somebody more told me today. Is, somebody, is, let, me, let me interrupt go you. Go ahead. Go let ahead. me just interrupt you for a second because somebody yeah. told me today that there was someone still practicing no matter what. Yeah. I know a couple offices. And, and are you, I mean, like, if somebody dies because of this, then you have no legal leg to stand on. I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but it's it's interesting to me. So yeah, I, I mean, I, I think too, though. I mean, regu- the the you know the uh, the the whole issue of liability, though. I mean, that's important, but it's really not should not be the main thing. You know, the main thing here is the safety of our team, the safety of us and our families, the safety of our patients, and. And something that I think maybe I, I sense this interesting split in our profession about who are we thinking about here. And I think it's an interesting time in our country mm. because the question is, what does the greater good mean? How much do we have responsibility to, for the greater good versus uh, making money? Uh, now, don't get me wrong. This is going to this is a horrible financial situation for many people. And I don't want to make any light of that or minimize that. But I mean, come on here, you know, like don't, I mean, everybody, everybody here knows everybody that's, that's in this profession understands we, we make, we have a potential of making a good living. We should be saving money. We should have ways that we can take care of emergencies, even things like this. Now I know there's going to be exceptions, people in bad situations, whatever. But my point here is that, this should be about much more than whether or not we work. And I think the country is under, I mean, if you look at what's going on in some of these other countries, if we have any potential here of slowing us down, what everyone's saying is the next few weeks are, are critical. Um, and I think that that's really what we should be thinking about. And yet you got folks out there going, you know, pretty much every man for themselves, like, Hey, screw you guys. I, I got to make some money here. And maybe that's because you didn't plan well, or maybe that's because you did plan well and you just, you frankly, you feel like you're invincible or you're not concerned about the virus. You don't think there's enough cases to be worried about, whatever. But we, all we can say is this was a decision we made. Mm -hmm. Um, We think, I feel like it was the right decision. I think probably by the end of this week, we're going to see some more mandated shutdowns anyway. Yeah. So it's a question of which side of history do you want to be on? Do you want to be on the side of, hey, we made this decision you know, or, or, we, or someone forced us out. I don't know. It's, uh, maybe that's too strong of a statement. But the, regardless, Wes and I talk about it. We go, okay, this is kind of what we're thinking. Well, immediately, what do you got to do? You have to, you have to enlist the help of people much smarter than us because there's all this legal mm-hmm. question. There's uh, the questions of these bills that are being looked at in the House and Senate to for a paid sick leave and FMLA. Mm-hmm. And so West and I immediately are like, we got to get together with basically with two people. And that's with, with our accounting side of things and then practice management side of things and also financial planning. Um, and so I think that that brings us to a good point. I want to acknowledge before we go into bringing uh, Justin Goodbread on, onto the show, I want to give a quick shout out to a couple of our sponsors because I think it's important we acknowledge them for allowing us to do what we do. Mm-hmm. And one of those is the Dental Crafters Network. Wes, uh, that's a interesting time right now, right? When you got to say, you got to call your lab up and say, hey, hold my stuff. But <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, they're feeling it too. I, did, I mean, all I did credit call goes Brad, to them. I did call Brad the dental lab guy. You know, uh, Brad has been a long time um, person that we've had on the show. We appreciate the Dental Crafters Network and Brad the dental lab guy and their support of uh, the Dental Guys podcast. And you know, I, I really want you guys to to know that they're feeling it just as much as we are. I talked to Brad mm-hmm. today. It's not a happy day. Um, he told me some things that he was having to do business wise. Now he'll be fine. Right. But, um, I really appreciate the dental crafters network and what they do for our, uh, podcast and supporting it. They've been uh, supporters for a long time, as you guys know. So, um, head over to dentalcrafters.net. When your office gets ramped back up, you can be sure that they're going to be there for you to kind of yep. get your, your restorations out the door. You know, we put everything kind of just on hold from a standpoint the labs. John, the second thing is the restorative driven implants course. And John, if everything goes right, we'll ramp back up and, and pick back up where, where we left off. But tell us a little bit about RDI and what's going on there right now. 
Yeah, RDI, uh, you know, session one and two up in Minneapolis was amazing. Uh, it went uh, incredibly well. We had a we had an awesome group this year. We've had some great groups come through RDI, and every time you know we get to be involved with with teaching, um, it's one of the most fun things we get to do. Um, it's looking like series three. Well, I think it is. It's going to be canceled, and that is that's because of what's going on right now. That it will be postponed. I should say not canceled, postponed, mm. uh, because we we have to make sure that this whole thing blows over. But um, we got students that are just chomping at the bit to get in and place implants and, and do, you know, do some hands-on live patient mentored with somebody looking over your shoulder in a United States based, you know, federally backed high quality clinic with complete follow-up care for these patients who are getting some of the best quality I think that you can get. And so you can feel good about coming to RDI, getting great, you know, evidence-based education and then getting to go and do real world cases on the types of patients you would be seeing day to day in your practice, the type of implants, fully planned, fully set and ready to go. CT guides already made, all the CTs taken, the guides are ready to go, provisionals ready to go, custom tissue formers, the whole deal. So we're looking forward to the next series three. If you haven't uh, signed up for restorative driven implants, if you're looking to get into implant placement, head over to Restorative Driven Implants, the website, check us out. Um, and, uh, you know, these classes fill up very quickly. We're getting all of our planning in place for 2021. Um, so get over there and check it out, get signed up. I think there might be one or two spots left for the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a, I don't, I don't know how much is even left, but go check that out and then uh, be looking for dates for 2021 coming soon. Restorative Driven Implants. So I think it's time to uh, really, you know, bring in some of the experts and talk a little bit about what's going on you know, financially is what everybody's concerned about because they're concerned about their business, you know, and that's a little bit what we're going to talk about tonight. And we're going to bring uh, uh, Justin Goodbread. You guys know him um, from uh, the podcast because when we go from our typical intro to our main show, we have like a little minute there where Justin's been a great sponsor and provided us with some great content. So we really appreciate uh, Justin Goodbread and being a sponsor of the show. And we thought it was great for you guys to hear a little bit about some just off the cuff stuff. I mean, this is like live streaming. I can't believe we're doing this. It's kind of crazy, but we're super excited yep. to bring it to you today. Yeah, and good to have a real pro on here, like right. Justin, to be able to tell yeah. us what's going on. <laughs> so, uh, John, um, a little bit about today and this morning as Justin gets logged in there is this morning, um, we had our team, we had a team meeting and we brought everybody together. And I was in communication with Justin uh, regarding my team. And as Justin comes into the podcast here, he's given me some good advice over the last couple of days. And John, what questions do you have for Justin? Well, the, the first thing I want to maybe set the stage here, you know, is, is you got basically two things. And first of all, Justin, welcome. Glad yeah. to have you, man. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for having yeah. me. You got two things here that, for me at least, that I was immediately needing to go to Justin for. And one of those was... Uh, you know, how we're handling things with the team uh, in terms of uh, thinking through uh, paid time off, uh, this whole paid sick leave, all of that, that discussion. And I know that's that a lot of that is some legal, some HR, not all of that's Justin's world, but he's got, he's got a lot of knowledge about that as well, or can point us to where we need to go to find out more about that. And then for me, it was also, a, a, I don't mind to talk about this because I think we're all in this boat was, hey, I got to make a phone call to my bank. Yeah. <laughs> and that's going to be a big phone call, uh, which I made today. And I got to ask some questions, which is, okay, so, uh, you know, I got some debt with you guys, which any, almost all practice owners have. Um, can we do something about this for the next unforeseeable couple of months? And how do I handle that, Justin? I asked him. And then also, what do we do about kind of where our money is now, you know, and, and do we change things about where we have our money? Do we, do we take it all out and put it in a mattress? <laughs> you know, I mean, do we, do I get out of the market now? Right. And these are all the, some of the questions. So I think I want to focus on kind of, you know, what, what are some of the, the general recommendations that you're making, you know, to practices? Uh, what are some of the discussions looking like Justin, you know, what, what are some of the things that the typical dentist needs to be doing or thinking about now if they're if they're considering shutting down their practice? Yeah, the first thing I'm going to say, guys, is that this is a very fluid situation. The things are changing dynamically every second. In fact, 
I'm still waiting on one announcement to come out on a piece of ruling, or I want to say a ruling, a clarification on some legislation that is pending. And hopefully tomorrow morning we'll have a lot of guidance for for you guys and I know your listeners. But, you know, the, the advice we were given today, um, I counted 17 in-office or video meetings. We actually canceled all in-office meetings, as you can imagine. We did 17 video meetings. And with those 17 meetings, 15 of them were at dentists nationally. It was amazing the, the amount of turmoil and stress that your profession is dealing with. And so the guidelines that we were given today, John, to answer your question directly is number one, cash is king. Right now, as most people are, you want to try to lock down as much of your, I'm going to use the term frivolous expenses as possible and hold cash. Now that's going to mean like you at the bank, you're going to see if you can get some reprieve on some lending. That means you're going to pay minimum payments on debt on credit cards or debts right now. You're going to try to not buy equipment. If I still want to buy a piece of equipment right now, it makes no sense. So from first thing we're going to deal with is cash is king. The second thing we're going to deal with is highly specialized marketing. Now, this is a business play here. You know, one of the things that we business owners, and I've been a business owner for 25 plus years, we work with hundreds of business owners nationally. And one of the things I've noticed is that when times get tough, especially dentists, because of your overwhelming personality types, the very first thing that is cut is marketing. And you may cut some of the some of the traditional style marketing, but right now the leaders who are listening to y'all to y'all podcasts in this particular episode, the leaders in the dental community have the opportunity now to do something unique, and that is as business owners we, we can change the narrative. You know, I'm going to bet on the entrepreneur of the United States of America every day of the week. And as a business owner, what you can do is you can market in a non-sales approach, but in a way that impacts your community. So, for example, this is a silly example, but, you know, there's a lot of places around the country where I was listening to your show. There are a lot of places that have been mandated that you close. And instantly overnight, some millions of parents became homeschooling parents instantly. It's amazing. Overnight. So we have a stress in place and you've got kids at home now who aren't used to being at home. So wouldn't it be amazing if with a little bit of levity, with your personality type, a little bit of levity, you can reach out to these parents and said, hey, let me show you ways how to prevent your kids from having cavities right now. And did something fun that was entertaining that said, hey, this, this friendly tip is bought to you by Roger Dental Group or My Family Dentistry or Roger Family Dentist, whatever the title is. Or, you know, here's some ways how you can prevent from losing that bright pearly white smile during this corona apocalypse and you give some ideas. The key here is not to sell. The key here is to educate and provide that very calm, still voice. So those are two points that I can definitively say right now. Now, with that in mind, John, um, Chris Mahan with Mahan Associates, I understand he's a regular on your show. The guy's awesome. He's a rock star, one of my dearest friends in the professional world. Chris and I are going to be doing a very lengthy uh, podcast tomorrow where we're addressing everything from how do you deal with cash flow right now? How do you deal with balance sheets? How do you deal with your interest, your debt? What about investing? Should you stop investing? Should you pull out of the market? What about the employee issue? Man, there's a lot of movement right there on that. So, John, I can't give you all the answers tonight, but what I can tell you is there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of fear and a hasn't experienced anything like this, to my knowledge, in the recent history. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that that's that's kind of what I expected you to say. And I'm I'm excited. Uh you, you right before the show, you know, you mentioned that you and, and Chris are gonna be doing this podcast tomorrow. Uh, and I'm gonna be tuning in, I guarantee it, because uh, and I think every dentist should. I mean, this is this is all right now, like you say, such a fluid situation. And what we're getting a lot of our information is really from Google, you know, and that's not really a great solution many times. And um, so I look forward to tuning in. How can, by the way, uh, how can people connect with that? Where are we going to be able to find that tomorrow? Yeah, so we're going to record the podcast in, in both video and audio format. Instantly, we're going to upload it to the Financially Simple YouTube channel and the Financial Simple podcast. Now, the podcast will take us a little bit longer because of the audio scrubbing, as you guys are well aware of, but the video in its raw form, we're just going to shoot it raw form, is going to be on the Financially Simple YouTube channel. Check it out there. You can go to financiallysimple.com as well, forward slash dentist, and we'll have it uploaded there. 
as well. Awesome. So, and then Chris Mahan is going to send it out to his network as well. So we can try to, you know, the biggest thing here, guys, is that your profession has the opportunity to be leaders right now more than ever. You, you, the profession as a whole are smart people. People look up to you uh, as with your with your credentials and your knowledge. You have the power to impact thousands of people just within your patient base alone. And the key here that I want to impart on those listening tonight is this: is God's still in control. This is not surprised to you. We know that God's still in control. But we have the opportunity as stewards of our education, as stewards in our community, to speak calm, to speak. Uh, it's to speak knowledge in such a way that it helps people to diffuse the situation. And more importantly, as you were talking about earlier, John, in, in the episode, we have the ability to make a stand, a stand that I believe just like you, especially in the dental profession, could impact your profession for many generations. Now's the time. Mm. Yep. Well, that's, that's heavy. And I think that's, I think we're feeling that heaviness right now. You know, as I was telling my team this, you know, I mean, we sat down this morning and, you know, I just like, I, I didn't even mean to, but it's like, I felt like this sigh, like, as I'm like, oh, like I'm about to say this, like we're going to shut down for three weeks, you know, and here's why. Um, and, you know, once we, we get off with you here in a minute, Wes and I'll talk specifically about what we're doing individually in our practices, but it was just such a moment. It's like a yeah. historical moment in my life, in my practice and, you know, you could, you could tell that, you know, the team's looking for leadership and, and so is the profession. Um, and I, and that's one of the things that, again, I think it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of, of calm headedness, but it also takes a lot of information and, yes, and you have to be sure that you're coming from a place of actually understanding what you're up against. And, and I don't know that any of us really truly does have that. That's why there's always a little uncertainty, but that's business though. You know, that's the definition of entrepreneurship. You know, it's working the problem in a set of, of incomplete variables that are, are, you know, you have, you know, some things, there are certain things you just can't know. So you just have to try to work the problem the best you can. And I feel like that's what you're probably fielding those type of questions all day long. I mean, how, how do you think, I mean, just, is this going to be bad for the profession, are you are, are you concerned that you're going to see people really struggle through this? I mean, it is it's maybe hard to make a call on that, but are are you are you concerned? Um, as a profession as a whole, no, because I believe that in the day I'm going to bet on the entrepreneurial spirit of our American people every day of the week, John. I just mm. am within my person, okay? Because a dentist. The majority of dentists that I work with and that you guys are communicating with have that entrepreneurial spirit. Like we're going to charge hell with a water pistol. So I understand the, the flame that each of you burn with that burn within you. So as a profession, no, I don't think it's going to impact as of today's date long term. Now, that being said, um, I think you mentioned earlier or maybe in one of our conversations that there is a time for feast and there's a time for famine and that whenever we're going through those feasting times, planning must be done. Tax planning, good prudent financial planning, good prudent business planning. Um, some people just haven't done that to, to their own detriment, I believe. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that two or three of our dental clients are going to struggle during this time and they are not going to progress in this this event could set them back for a decade or longer. That is very possible. Mm. You know, there's so much information right now that's needed. I was thinking as you were just talking in our office, we have multiple MBAs. We have multiple, we have five certified financial planners. We have a uh, master's in forensic accounting. We have certified financial analysts. We have more designations than you could shake a stick at. And then Chris's office is the same way. And whenever Chris and I talked this morning, we spoke this morning about the problem that dentists specifically are facing. And candidly, chiropractors are dealing with it. Optometrists are dealing with it. Um, a lot of different medical, I call it entrepreneur doctors, are dealing with this. It's not solely dentists. But when we started talking about the circumstances, the list of questions that he and I had this morning were profound. We couldn't mm -hmm. even answer the questions. So we instantly deployed both of our of our teams. We reached out to our experts. In fact, one of the people who's coming on the SP, uh, coming on the Financial Civil Podcast is one of the chief administrators of the SBA. We mm. reached out to them and got one of the chief leaders as far as lending goes because there's so much information. So Chris and I felt like, John, that, you know, this is such an impactful time for the profession. 
and such an impactful time for the listeners of your show, our clients, his clients, and so many other clients. It is time for us to kind of work through this onion slice by slice, point Mm. by point, and try to get the information that we have today. Now, here's where it's going to be interesting. It's very fluid, which means that in the next week, the very information that we're making decisions on today could change. Yeah. So it's one of those things that we can't sit and forget it. It's one of these things that we're going to have to be attuned to. In fact, so much so that Chris said, you know what, Justin, we may have to do this again in two days, depending on what changes with Congress and legislation, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I think, I think that's a great point here is that, you know, we're, we're going to try to bring updates along the way about what we're doing. And, You know, I think, Justin, maybe what we do is as things change and as the information change comes, um, what we'll do is we'll plan maybe having you back on uh, like we have in the previous podcast as far as discussion and things like that. And this will be a good, good time for us to all kind of just sounds like we just need to wait let right. let things let the water flow downhill a little bit, right? But 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 some of the things that you know we mentioned at the beginning, you know, having cash, yeah, you know, you can't like that needs to be done now, you know. So there's certain things you need to be doing right now, and that's why I'm looking forward to your podcast tomorrow because I feel like there'll be some things that no matter what the legislation looks mm-hmm. like, right, we have to do now, and then there's right. certain that certain things that. I mean, this whole question of what this family's first legislation is going to look like. And, you know, I mean, just like briefly, just I'll try to not go down that rabbit hole because I know we don't know a lot of things. But (laughs) I mean, there's this whole question of, okay, are we going to have, uh, you know, mandatory paid sick leave? Number one, is that even going to happen? Are we going to be exempted from that? The ADA just said today in an email that they're lobbying against that, that they want us to be exempted from that because we have so few employees. Um, so that's a question. Then next, And then the FMLA question, up to 12 yeah. weeks potentially of pay, we, we may be exempted from that. But you know what? Then the question is, okay, that's true if you're continuing to operate your business. Say you're a factory and you say, hey, we're staying open. We're not mandated to be closed. Then people call out sick. Well, then I see you have to pay that. But what if you shut your business down as a result of a mandate? Do you have to pay any of that stuff anyway? And so like this all, this whole bill may not even apply to us anyway if you shut down, only if you continue to operate your practice, which is once again, another reason why people may consider shutting down. So I mean, does that kind of summer, I know we talked a little bit about it. Is that kind of where you're at with this thing now? Like we don't know if this is even going to really apply to us or, I mean, is that too long of an answer? Maybe save it for the podcast tomorrow. I don't want to you know, get too much into the high weeds. <laughs> yeah, no, we're going to cover a summit on the podcast. Unfortunately, no one knows. I wish my crystal ball worked, guys, but I broke it a few years ago and I haven't been able to replace it yet. So I can't see into the future really well. Um, unfortunately, today, as of what is it, 830 at night Eastern time on a Monday or Tuesday evening, we don't know the answer to your questions, John. But I do think a little bit of patience. We'll know those answers. And I, I can remember whenever the 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 the, the last tax bill changed major things in my world and so many answers that we didn't know for weeks upon months so i don't think we're going to see that here i realize that there's a there's a a propensity at this point to get a little worked up i understand Mm. that and i guys i'm with you i'm in a business that's a leading indicator business my income has already suffered long before y'all's did okay so i'm already with you running these same scenarios what I don't know is what that legislation is ultimately going to do. And we've watched Congress enough to know that it could get all the way to the president's desk and him veto it or do something different because he wants something different. We know these things. So what I do know definitively tonight is this cash is king. I know that. I know that we can cut expenses down. I know that. I know we can pay minimums. I know that we can market double down on market. See, let me, one more time on market because this is such a big deal for dentists. Hmm. The reason why many times we have to go and hire a marketing company is because we don't have the time. Now that's not an excuse. Now you have the time to do specialized marketing and set yourself and your practice apart right now. That is amazing if you think about it. Never have you dealt with this before as a dentist. And if you could do that, you could come out of this just so much greater than whenever you entered into this. So we're going to deal with some of the marketing. We're going to deal with investing. I'm going to tell you that I'm personally 
not stopping my investing. It doesn't make sense. Things are at a 30, 40% discount right now. I've had that question over and over again. I've had some conversations today with clients who are cash rich. They've been preparing for this moment for a while. And I said, hey, let's jump in some cash. On the other hand, I've had a conversation with some dentists today that are not cash rich. And I'm having to say, hey, we need to stop investing. So it's going to be a case by case scenario on that. So, John, without diving too deep in an hour long conversation, I know you guys have a lot to cover tonight. I'm going to tell you, stay tuned tomorrow. We hope to have this on the Financially Simple YouTube channel. We're going to do our best to provide an exhaustive uh, review for everybody because we know the way you think. We know the way dentists think and how detailed you want to get. We're going to do our best to do that. And if we don't cover something tomorrow, for those of you who are listening to this, I want you to reach out to us. Say, hey, Chris, Justin, I need you to answer this question. You didn't do a good job on that. We're going to do our best. So, so if they want to, again, if they want to check this out, they're going to go where? Just to make sure everybody knows. Sure. Go to financiallysimple.com or go to the Financially Simple channel on YouTube. We're going to have a video there and we should have it on the Financially Simple podcast as well. They're going to air at different times because of the way that you have to process that data. But those three locations will be will be um, though you'll be able to see them on those locations, John. Okay. Well, awesome, Justin. I really appreciate you being on the show tonight. And um, listen, as I'm sitting here producing this show, we could and John, John, you know, um, it's so hard not wow. to ask questions, right? I'm just sitting here, just listening, drinking it all in, just like a lot of our listeners. And you're listening right now. And you're viewing this, and if you're looking at this, uh, please share this across the Facebook. Let people know what's going on. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to try to give you up to date information over the next, you know, two to three weeks or whatever. And again, I really appreciate Justin Goodbread coming on our show and saying a little bit about what's going on tomorrow. This is a very special co- podcast. You heard where to go. So again, thank you, Justin, for being on the show tonight. Yeah, thanks, hey, Justin. Y'all have a good one. Y'all keep it safe and be safe. We'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Bye-bye. So let's talk about, Wes, just kind of like brass tacks here. Okay. Let's talk about what we actually did when we met with our teams today. The very first thing I did was I said, let's have a team meeting and let's talk about it. The very first thing I wrote on the board was I wrote, number one thing, emerge ready. Okay. So Mm. we, when we get back going again, whenever that is, it doesn't matter. We want to be ready to go. Okay, because everything underneath Emerge Ready today was we're going to have a three week hiatus minimum. How is that impacting what we need to do now? So, underneath that, we talked about how we're going to reschedule three weeks of patients. I've got two and a half hygienists full time. I've got, you know, I'm booked out a month and a half. I was getting ready to bring on an associate. Okay, we'll talk a little bit about that too and what happens there. And then on top of that, you have all of the things that we had in the works as far as restorative care and all those things that are ongoing treatment. How does that all get handled? And then we had some plans too. We have normally this time of year, we do what we call spring cleaning at the dental office. Basically, strip down the dental office, take an inventory of all of our instruments. We take a day. Uh, This Thursday was going to be that day because I was going to be gone to the AO. So we just kind of shifted that up a little bit. It took our team, John, of two people up front, actually three, uh, because my treatment planning coordinator is working back and forth between the front with patients. It took them six hours to move three weeks of patients. Now, one of the things that we did, I called John. I said, one of my trip, my scheduling coordinator, shout out to Angela for coming up with this is what she did is she said, you know, I woke up at four o'clock this morning and I started thinking about moving all those patients. And she said, there was, this came to my mind about a way to track. And so what we did is anybody that has been scheduled in the time frame of three weeks that we moved, anybody we moved because of this, we actually created a code in EagleSoft called COVID, okay? And we walked that out as, you know, a zero charge. Basically, it's a code. Now we can run a report yep. and actually see a list, digital list of anybody that was moved because... And that's a great... That, I felt like that's such a great, great idea. Like, I picked that up immediately. I went back to my my team and said, hey, guys, here's a way. Because they were printing off schedules so that we would see who all was on there to start with. But, 
you know, once you start moving people into like unscheduled lists and in and out of there, you're like, where are these people? Uh, having a list, a report that you can come back to is critical, uh, especially I feel like when you're talking about the length of time you need for these procedures, mm. how to piece the schedule back together. I mean, these ladies are just amazing at doing this, but having a shortcut like that is huge. So six hours to, to, to get everything moved for you guys. Yeah. It took six hours to move everything. That's what they told me today. I was out, I was doing some things with business wise calling banks. Um, we, you know, we, you know, I run a practice and just like everybody else, we have practice notes, we have practice loans, we have, we have landlords and I informed these people about what was going on. And we made decisions financially. Like Justin said, I think it's important to kind of maximize your cash. We did things at home. My wife, and I did to maximize our cash. So we're set up for the next couple months, not having to worry about, you know, where we're getting our food and, and the banks aren't worrying about where their money's coming from or just wondering and, and just calling and talking to my bankers. I mean, it was actually an easy conversation today with my landlord. He understood and, and all the parties that I talked to uh, were very understanding about what was going on in the business, small business realm. And there were some big decisions that were made um, with big giant companies, John. You talked about those things. But really, when it comes to small business, I mean, we run a very, very kind of not a month to month <clears throat> ship, but it's a pretty tight ship. You know, we don't carry massive multi billion dollar, you know, uh, budgets. And um, it's, it's something that. I think that today I was encouraged by the conversations that I had with my team. Um, John, I don't know how much we want to talk about what we're doing with our team. What do you think about that? I mean, I think it's I think it's something that we can talk at least generally about. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, really the thing that most team members, I think, are most concerned about, understandably, is what are they going to get paid? And right. most business owners are we're most worried about how are we going to figure out pay for people? Mm -hmm. And um, so I just started my conversation out with that this morning after we talked about, you know, what's happening and why. And I think they all kind of knew because we'd been talking about it. Right. Um, I said, you know, I guess, you know, you guys are worried about pay. And so I'll, I'll kind of give you a at least basic outline as to what we're doing is, you know, I, I had to make some tough decisions on this. And, mm -hmm. you know, my team, I, I believe, is the the cornerstone of why my business is successful. Um, you know, I, I try to do everything I can um, to support, you know, the quality of dentistry that we say we have by backing it up with my, hopefully with my skill if I can. But um, the team really is what makes us look good and they can make or break us. Um, so I said, guys, you know, my, what we're going to do is I'm going to take your, your paid time off that normally would accrue through the year um, would equates to roughly a couple of weeks usually that we give everybody that's full time. And, uh, we're just going to basically front load that right now. And I'm mm -hmm. going to pay for your next two weeks of pay time off. Um, you, that means, you know, you're going to use it all right now. If you, you know, if, if you elect to, they didn't have to do that, but I told them that would be what I would first want to do. Mm -hmm. Even for those who hadn't accrued the full two weeks, I just said, look, you got two weeks, you know, it's just, it's there. And then, you know, and it's a decision everybody has to make for their own practice. Uh, as far as what you want to pay more, we, I did elect to, to pay more uh, for that third week and, and to help them out because, uh, you know, I, I've tried to prepare for crazy things to happen. Never thought it would be this. You know, it's more likely that you're going to get disabled uh, and that, that at least you got insurance that can help you. Oh, business overhead insurance, office overhead insurance, uh, personal disability uh, we have an office uh, long-term disability policy as well as individual. All those things are completely off the table with this. So you have to decide, you know, how much are you willing to pay your team to keep them on? Um, they all have bills. They all have challenges in their life. Um, and, and I would argue maybe greater than what we face from a day-to-day -day basis in terms of, you know, they're, they're on a much thinner edge many times on, on having not as much money to go around on a given month. So, um, that's what I chose to do. Uh, I wouldn't tell anybody they have to do that. I would just say, you know, if you can try to help your team, if you can try to keep them around the other alternative is that you think about, you know, having them file for unemployment. 
um, which is an option. Um, I'm trying to avoid that if I can, um, but it may come to that if things get longer, crazier with this. Um, but I, who knows how long this is going to go. So we had that discussion and, you know, I mean, the, the spirit that was in that room at that moment, because I, I mean, I'm, I'm stressed, you know, to the max about this whole thing, even though I, I feel like I've tried to prepare pretty well, well wait, I'm still wait not a second. sure, like, you know, you know, I've known you for a long time and you, you're probably a lot more, um, analytical, like from a standpoint of like, there's a lot of roadmaps in your brain and a mm -hmm. lot of scenario making, and it's not a fallacy, right? To want to have like a roadmap or want to have like a plan or yeah. things like that. And in some ways, you know, for, for you, I can imagine you sitting in there. This is real stuff, people. I mean, like when we're talking about this, I mean, this is real deal. Like I, I felt, I felt like, you know, I'm a filler, right? Mm. And so, you know, I, I walk in and I, I don't get, you know, John, you've watched me lecture. I don't get nervous lecturing, right? I've stood in front of many people. But today, you could hear the tremors in my voice. And as I stood in front of the whiteboard and my hand was moving, I watched my hand shaking. Yeah. Because, I mean, this is like, uh, this is unbelievable. When you're telling people we may not have a place for you to work in three weeks and you may have to go on an unemployment check. And we don't know when we're coming back. I mean, that's real deal stuff. You're dealing with people's families, their lives. They don't, it's, and you know what? You know what was really encouraging to me, John? And like, I know it happened on your team because you work with amazing people. One of my girls has been with me for a long time. Before I even started, she was like, I can't imagine if I was you. She was like, mm. we've had such an amazing year. And we've built up to this point to where we've just worked so hard for the last 18 months. And here we are. And she was like, you know, I'm not concerned or worried. I'm not fearful, but I just thought about you this morning. And I thought, man, I mean, that, that meant a lot to me, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and so yeah. these kind of things are really difficult. Yeah. To I mean, when, when you're, you know, uh, like you said, I mean, I'm a hundred percent on the Myers Briggs, I'm a hundred percent T, you right. know, I've got no <laughs> F man. No, I'm not, I got no feelings, you know? Right. And, and that's I mean, just how I'm, I'm wired. I'm the guy it's that just, says, John, I think we need to send them a gift. And John's like, yeah, I never thought about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I, I totally care and love my, my, my team and my people. And, you know, it's just like, I, I'm a spreadsheet guy, you know, yeah, like I'm, I'm fine. I love a plan. I love a good plan. There's nothing uh, wrong I'm with that. And you know what? I'm a better dentist, right? Because of that conversation that you and I've had, right? Yeah. Like, if you, you look need at both like, in your life, you right? need both. You need both. If you look at like how numbers driven my practice was before you and I met versus it is now, it's like, oh man, I really appreciate the, the, yeah. I the, mean, we both inspire, you know, you're, in, you inspire me to be a better feeler. I mean, people around us, you know, like usually our spouse oftentimes is opposite us in certain ways, you know, or, or our friends that we connect with. You have people that, you know, just kind of, they, they, they are a counterpart. And, you know, my team understands that. And I think that's why it was especially like emotional mm. in the, in the room, because they know that, you know, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a super emotional feeler kind of guy. Like, I mean, I have a great time with them. We have super, we have fun, but I'm not like, I don't get all angry about things ever. And I don't get all upset about things ever. I just, I'm like steady, man. That's just me. And so when they see that I'm like struggling a little bit to like, I don't have a plan. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. You know, I got debt. I got stuff I got to pay. You know, we all have to eat. We all want to have a job. I don't want to lose anybody. Um, I want our patients to be taken care of. Uh, they they felt that and you could just feel them like channel that what I needed in that moment was for them to kind of just push me back up. And they, and they totally did. And that's what it's all about in a good team. And it just reinforces that decision to make sure that you take care of them. And it's not just to get that from them, but it, it definitely makes you feel like, okay, this was the right thing to do. Um, and, you know, I'm not, again, saying everybody should do that. If you, if you don't, if you don't have the money, you don't have the money. And sometimes you just have to make tough decisions. And, and I think teams should understand that too. You know, if you can't do it, you can't do it. But you know, some people are, are laying people off immediately. 
And that and that's yeah. and that's a tough decision. You know, we talked to somebody today that they laid off half of their workforce and and they were attached to the dental field. And there was somebody else that told me that they were just gonna go ahead and just send everybody home and just call them whenever they get started back and and not yeah. even worry about. It. And you know what? That is a personal business decision that you have to make for yeah. your office. No one's gonna no one in this particular time is going to fault you for anything you've done, right? As long as I feel like that you try to do the right thing and try mm. to protect the people around you that are helping you perform and do the dentistry that's possible. And I think, again, going back to this Emerge Ready, I think it kind of is is spot on with what Justin's saying. If you're not looking to, and I'm not saying trying to make money here, I'm trying to say being prepared, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not if you're not looking at how you're going to come out of this, right? Yep. Then you're you're going to be behind and you need to be planning on coming out of this because we will come right. out of this. We will survive. It's going to be fine. It may get yep. worse before it gets better, you know, just like we say in surgery, but yep. But, but I don't know which I don't know which conversation I was most worried about today. I was most worried about that conversation and then quickly followed by the conversation with the bank because I already knew, as Justin said, we got to have cash. We got to make sure that we tap into reserves. Well, you called them would, first. You called them first. And actually, I called them and they mm -hmm. didn't call me back for like six hours. So here I am like wringing my hands and you yeah. called me and you were like, dude. No problems, yeah. right. right? Like I, I got a hold of my 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 guy at the bank within short time and told him the situation and said, "Hey, we're we're reacting to this recommendation. We think it's the right thing to do." And mm. but this this means that I'm not going to have any revenue for the next at least three weeks. Um, you know, they kind of know my cash position, but uh, you know, I said, "Is it okay if I defer payment on?" my practice loan and my, my building loan for a little while. And, uh, and they said, yeah, no problem. No problem. They said, you know, this is understandable. We get it. We get what's going on. And you know, what I'd heard the day before is that there's some regulatory guidance to some of these banks too. Hey, prepare for this. We know there's going to be some of this going on. So just kind of float through. And then the second thing was, you know, I had secured before, which one thing I definitely recommend if you haven't already done this, secure a business line of credit. Mm. I had done this a while back, so I already kind of had it ready. Right. Had never used it. And I said, hey, I wanna, I wanna draw that thing down and get that cash out so that if I need it, I have it. And then if I don't need it, I can just basically put it right back in. And again, no big deal. They're like, yeah, we'll get the paperwork together, just need you to sign something, and that's ready to roll. So what I thought was maybe gonna be I don't know, maybe a little harder conversation turned out to not be. Maybe that's just because we're early. Maybe that's just because in two weeks, things are going to be crazier. But maybe that's just the way it's going to be. It's not going to be as bad as I thought. I hope so. I hope I hope it's not. Well, I think, John, this has been a, a great live stream. There's a lot left, left to talk about. No, we don't know how long this is going to last. Uh, John and I are mm -hmm. going to continue to release episodes. Uh, I think today we released an episode uh, next week. Yeah, we Zero have Bone one. Loss, right? Yeah, was Zero I Bone think, Loss uh, is going to continue. We've got yeah. another one, Zero Bone Loss, finishing up. I think Zero Bone Loss finishes up in two weeks. Yep. We're probably going to come back and do some more live streaming about this. This yeah. is going to be pushed out immediately as yep. a um, kind of a standalone episode. And so if you didn't catch the live stream, too bad, too sad. <laughs> yeah, and a little bit of love out to some of the people that gave us some comments. You know, we did hear a couple of people commenting on areas, you know, this one one uh, interesting comment was that uh, what happened up in uh, in Iowa, um, that uh, they actually said that they weren't going to, they were going to stay open. And then they responded to the American Dental Association uh, and and changed and, and ended up following that recommendation. Uh, we heard about this, you know, in, in Minnesota Senate, you know, and then some Manny's talking about how the unemployment coverage, but if it goes further, go, the employees will go on to that, even if they do stay open. Uh, Lauren, a uh, great guy, um, you know, all dental offices close to the month in Minnesota. Um, and then, you know, let's see what happens. And uh, Manny comments about, you know, existing loans and lines. This is, this is all the same questions that are coming up and coming up all the same types of comments. Awesome stuff. Tune into this podcast that, uh, Justin and Chris are doing tomorrow. I'm going to be there listening. I want to, I'm very interested to hear what's, what they're going to say. And we'll try to keep you also up to speed as we see new things coming down. Hopefully we'll all be talking about in two weeks or so preparing 
to return to work, maybe to a new normal. If not, we'll be here to talk about it. Yeah. Well, um, if you like what you've heard tonight, I think um, it's, I really appreciate those that were listening. We had a solid number of people joining us tonight, and I really appreciate that. So for uh, those that um, haven't heard about the dental guys, um, you need to share this to them, right? You need yeah. to basically head on over and um, hit the share button. Like, subscribe, and share, as we like to say. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter. Send us a comment. Send us questions. If you have questions and you want to reach out to uh, Justin Goodbreg, you can find him at financiallysimple.com. We appreciate his sponsorship of The Dental Guys. He's a longtime sponsor there, and thank for him for coming on the show. Um, and so for John... I'm Wes, and we are the Dental Guys.